Um, this is, you know, uh, a quote from the Vedas. We talked about the Vedas last time. So let the Brahmin hear the praise. We utter this has the four horned buffalo emitted. Four are his, are his horns. Three are the feet that bear him. His head are two. His hands are seven in number. And then yeah, we, we tried to do the breaks, math calculation last time. He breaks that down. We got stuck on this last time, probably because you couldn't see the image that I was referring to. But here we go. This, this is what I was talking about when I, you know, we were talking about ten to the seventh power of hands, where we got hung up last episode. Thank you. Appreciate the heart. So four point three two million years in the Kalpa. One Kalpa equals one thousand Mahayugas. What's the modern estimate for the age of Earth? It's 4.5 billion years. So, how would you have known that? And is this just a coincidence that they're alluding to what could be the age of the Earth in this ancient Vedas? Um, we talked about the pre-deluvian -delu god kings of Sumeria, and we talked about pre-deluvian, that means before the great flood of the mm -hmm. Earth. And once again, he highlighted the numbers that keep popping. All of this stuff makes me reconsider the Bible and other ancient texts as having more truth to it than just encoded. Yeah, like uh, Noah. Noah and the Ark and the Flood story. I kind of believe that. I kind of come full circle and believe that. If you, yeah, I mean, you talk about these catastrophes that, that wiped out flooding, great flood covered entire continents would be, would be those types of catastrophes that we could expect when some massive cosmic impact could lead to um, massive tsunamis that flood landscapes. Yeah. And how would most have known about an impending flood coming up? Well, well, we would study the heavens, right? If it was in reference to a great catastrophe. So we'd study the heavens and speak to God, informing us about the impending catastrophe that's coming up, right? Yeah. Um, actually... Can you repeat what you just said? Because you said something about talk to God. In a... No, I'm saying like, how would Moses have um, known that you know this great flood is coming and go and warn all the people that there's this great flood coming? And um, yeah, if it wasn't if you... for an understanding of the cosmological cycle, right? I that's, that's what kind of... I don't. Yeah, I don't think I said that on the last episode, but I I think that's how they would know what like they can predict the future. You know, the book of Revelation symbolically talking about the end of the world at this time, blah, blah, blah. Those weird predictions that wind up kind of coming true. It's not because they had some, you know, they communed with a being that told them. They just understood cosmological cycles and what's going to happen in that kind of way. That makes more sense. Yeah. Me than anything. Um, what's that? 360 years according to the human calculation constitute one divine year 360 years human calculation one divine year wise people know that there are four yugas in Bharat Tavarsa we talked about that the first one is Kripta, Tretta, Dwapara and Kali yeah we talked about that on the last one uh, I had a note in here that it's uh, interesting that ancient cultures around the world acknowledged there was a flood or floods that decimated mm -hmm. humanity around same time so I yeah, like the statement that you were just just talking about but speaking of have, go, go ahead. ahead no 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 you go ahead no, I was just going to say here we have the tabulation of the Vedic ages so um, he lays out the yugas he talks about their dura duration in divine years and then what that equivalent is in human years and uh, once again, we, it adds up to that 432, four, 
million three hundred and twenty thousand years. Oh, what's up, little buddy? That's Coco. What's up, Coco? Hey. My cousin's dog. She let me take her. Cute. Yeah, keep going. She just wanted to check out the charts. She's interested yeah. in sacred geometry. Say bye, Coco. Say bye. Do, boo, boo, boo. Bye, Coco. Okay, go on. So, yeah, like I was saying, once again, you add up the total amount of time in human years, we get that 4320000 again. I put that one Vedic years, 36 human years. The uh, <laughs> the Maya Yuga is 10 times longer than the Kali Yuga. Uh, 432,000. The Kali Yuga is the same number of total years the Sumerians listed for their years in reign for their kings. So we see that same system that's being utilized, right? The Sumerians are using the names of god kings, the periods, as the sub of the subdivision of that 432,000 and the Vedic years begin after that 432,000 that the Sumerians uh, speaking of. Hmm. All right, and then we have the Mayans, the Mayan world ages. This is r close to where we wrapped up last time. Yeah, that's actually right where we wrapped up last time. Um, the Baktun, one Baktun is the length of Tony Katun, which is 144,000 days. There's that number again. So they measure it in days. You see the same numbers cropping up over and over along all these ancient cultures. This, I thought, yeah, was really interesting. This is that picture we were so, talking about. This is a, you know, a picture of Jesus Christ. If I had just come across this... I wouldn't really think much of it, but it's a representation of the great year. Yeah, those yeah. figures are the astrological zodiac signs, whatever Correct. they are. Yep, of the great year. So, yeah, like every four. Can you go back to that other picture and this one? No, of the it's further back of the actual yeah. great year, the seasons, and we can. Yeah, so those four, north, east, south, and west, are the four that are depicted around Jesus, right? The bull, the lion, what's that? Um, the bull, the scorpion, the man. And yeah, the, the bull, scorpion, lion, and the man. Yeah, so is that what's depicted around Jesus right there in that in that thing? A bull, scorpion, lion, that's a winged lion. That's a dragon, a serpent of some sort. That is a person. What's this right here? Looks like a bird. Hmm. I guess that's the man right there. Whatever it is, it's supposed oh. to... It was supposed to represent the four seasons of the great year. Let's see. Yeah, it should be a bull. Tar Taurus. Aquarius. What's the scorpion? What's the zodiac sign for the scorpion? Scorpio. Is that known as? Scorpio of the... And then the lion, what's that? Leo. So maybe there's different representations of... Uh... Yeah, they do use different representations in different cultures. Like the, the serpent will be a lizard or a dragon or some scaled figure. And then the lion will be a winged lion or some kind of cat. Oh. Has... It's okay, so Scorpio, most commonly represented by a scorpion, is your sign that has a few other animals associated with it. Specifically, the serpent, the eagle, and the okay. phoenix. Yeah, the eagle is so what There we go. So we have the eagle represented there. Okay, so that's that's what it is. It's, it's 
Yeah. Just it's, being represented by uh, through other cultures by a different animal. But still referring to the cycle of the great year. When you put an astronomical um, layout over all these ancient stuff, things start to make sense and fall into place. 